Salah is obligatory for all Muslims and all believers. The order of Salah comes 700 times in Quran. It is the deed amongst all the deeds. This is the deed which has been most ordered of in Quran. 700 times does Allah talk about Aqimu Salata and Aqimu Salata and Atu Zakata both together offering of Zakat and paying uh, offering of Salah and paying of Zakat is mentioned 70 times in Quran Salah was made obligatory during the stay in Mecca and initially there were two prayers one in the morning and one in the evening and after the night of accession 12 years after the prophethood of Prophet وسلم, during the month of Ramadan and the night of accession were the five prayers made obligatory. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari in Muslim that Prophet وسلم, how prayers were enjoined she transmits that when Allah enjoined the prayer during the night of possession he enjoined it in the form of two rakat both in residency and in journey but then after migration to Medina then people were then then the prayer remained the same that is two rakat for the travel or for the journey but then they were increased for the condition of residence prayer is the second important pillar of Islam. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar anhu narrates in Bukhari that Prophet said, Buni al Islam ala hamsin. The pillar of Islam are five. There are five basic pillars of Islam. And you know very clearly that until and unless there are pillars, the building cannot be constructed. And if a building is constructed without the supporting walls or without the supporting erected pillars, the building, even if it, it is constructed, it will be very clumsy, it will be very weak. And just in one blow, it will just fall down, it will crumble down. So to, to build our building of Islam, Muslim needs to have these five pillars. And the pillars are Buni al Islam ala Hamsin, Shahadatan an la ilaha illallahu wa anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu, wa iqam is salati wa ita is zakati wal hajji wa saumi ramazan. To witness and to admit that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. To offer prayer, to pray zakat, to perform hajj and to fast in the month of Ramazan. So remember, without the pillar of Salah, Deen, Faith, Belief, our religion will not be complete, will not be constructed. And once we have not constructed and erected the building of Islam, we have no right to wait and to expect for a house or a palace or a building in Jannah. For Prophet ﷺ has clearly announced Salah as Miftahul Jannah. Salah is the key to paradise. And we all know very clearly that if we do not have the key to any door, we will not be able to open and enter into the room. Like if we don't have the key to our front door, <coughs> if we don't have the key to our main door or the main gate, despite the fact the house is our own house and despite the fact that we live there, if we don't happen to have the key to the main gate or to the main door, we will not be able to enter our own house. So Salah is the key to Jannah and nobody who hasn't prepared this key of Salah will be permitted or allowed to enter Jannah. 
That is why Prophet Sallallahu said, "Jualat qurrat aini fi salat." That the coolness of my eyes has been has been placed in salah. And remember the first question on the day of judgment, when people will be asked and will be inquired. and they will be held accountable for the rights of Allah the first question about the right of Allah will be about salah salah is so very important that without salah a person cannot be a believer has ajabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said bayna al-abdi wa bayna al-kufri tarku salah that between a believer and a disbeliever there is only the giving up of prayers only the giving up of prayers a person who is who is offering salah is a believer and a person who is not offering salah according to the words of this hadith is a non believer Hazrat Buraida radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Musnad Ahmad Tirmizi Nisa'i and Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said The covenant between me and these people is that of prayer. That is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I take the pledge of prayer from everybody who is the follower of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The covenant between me and these people is that of prayer. That whoever gives it up that is turns it aside from the course of Islam takes to disbelief. So the person who gives up salah in his life is thus a disbeliever. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Hazrat Ubaidah bin Samit رضي الله تعالى عنه reports that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, 'فَمَنْ تَرَقَهَا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَقَدْ خَرَجَ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ.' Whoever intentionally, knowingly, intentionally neglects prayers goes out of my fold. How how very important it is to understand. In the above saying, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has announced to us that any person who is deliberately, knowingly, deliberately, intentionally omitting salah will be characterized as an infidelity. The person will be categorized as an infidelity, and will be ejected from the Muslim Ummah. This is what we all need to realize from the core of our heart, and salah is by all means the deed which is the most beloved to Allah. This is the deed which is most pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Has Abd Allah bin Masood رضي الله تعالى عنه reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked, "أي الأعمال أحب إلى الله?" which deed among all the religious deeds is the most pleasing to allah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as-salatu li waqtiha birru al-walidain al-jihad fi sabil allah the first thing is to offer the prayer at the right time the second is to be to serve one's parents and the third is to do jihad in the path of Allah so this is a deed which causes the pleasure of Allah to the most and this is a beloved act for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the person who finds it difficult to offer salah or who who offers salah in a lazy manner then is no longer a believer he turns out as a hypocrite in the sight of allah we will be going through this verse in surah an-nisa inshallah very soon where allah says allah says is highlighting the properties and the behaviors of the hypocrites the munafiqeen in madina and allah says wa iza qamu ila salati qamu qusala that when they get up when they straight up for offering salah they come very lazily la yazkuruna allah illa qalila that they don't mention they don't remember allah a lot during their salah so a person who is not remembering allah who is thinking about so many things around himself in the world and who is feeling it 
or finding it hard, finding it difficult to offer salah and comes lazily towards salah as whom he is a hypocrite in the sight of Allah. Similarly, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said, For a hypocrite, no prayer is more tiresome than the prayers of Fajr and Isha. And if they realize how magnanimous the reward of these two prayers is, they would come to attend even crawling on their knees. And then Prophet sallallahu said, I intend to order the proclaimer for prayer to proclaim and another man to lead the congregation and I myself with the flame of burning fire, with the flame of burning fire, burn the houses of all those who do not come to the mosque for prayer even after they have heard the proclamation of the azan. And in other words, in Muslim Prophet ﷺ had said that if I had not fared for the children, for the women or for the sick people, I would have burned their houses. So this is the importance of Salah. And this is the importance of congregational Salah for men. Prophet ﷺ's word has a Jabir narrates in Muslim that what lies between a man and infidelity is abandoning of prayer. What lies between a man and infidelity is the abandonment of prayers. And what happens to a person who leaves a salah like the salah of Asr? Hazrat Ibn Umar ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet said, if it, anyone abandons the Asr prayer, if anyone leaves, quits, omits, knowingly, intentionally, deliberately, is what is actually meant here, abandons the Asr prayer, it is as though he had been cut off from his family and his property. Do we ever realize? Do we ever realize the time of Asr in marketplace? Azan is being called. The proclaimer announces, proclamations are announced and people keep on going about in the market, in the shops, shopping, window shop, shopping, dying, matching, all forms of worldly activities going on. The customers, the shopkeepers, nobody bunch, nobody budge and the time of Salah passes off. None of them do ever realize that they have been cut off from their family and they've been cut off from their houses. Little do people know and little do people believe. In all the designer shops, in all the tuition centers, in all the beauty parlors, in all the get-togethers, the time of a sir comes and it passes off. And people just don't realize that not not offering or omitting it intentionally or deliberately is going to cut off them, cut all of them off from their families as if their families were being looted and plundered. Salah is so very important that offering Salah intentionally and with full sincerity to please Allah even if this is not complete, what happens? Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu was talking about the Antichrist, Masih Dajjal. And then he said, shouldn't I tell you something which is even more dangerous than the faction of Dajjal? The companion said, please sure do. Prophet sallallahu said, concealed polytheism. It is more dangerous, even more dangerous than all the factions of the Jal. And he was asked, what do you mean by concealed polytheism? He said, it is a condition, it is a deed that when a person stands for prayer, he just prolongs his prayer due to the fact that he knows that somebody is watching him. 
Hazra Shaddad bin Aus, Ruzi Allahu Ta'ala, who reports in Mustad Ahmad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever prayed with the intention to show off, committed polytheism, who fasted to show off, committed polytheism, and who did charity to show off, committed polytheism. So for prayer, the person has to be sincerely desiring to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, the same salah will turn into polytheism, an act of polytheism, finding partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how important salah is, I just narrated a few words of the Prophet but remember that all the stages of salah, 